This is my entire master's in business analytics in under 10 minutes. It cost me $45,000 to do a master's in business analytics with scholarships. Right now, it costs more than $60,000 to $70,000 to do the same master's degree. Is a degree in data analytics worth it in 2024? What exactly is taught in this degree? Can we not learn all these for free online or taking some Udemy or Coursera courses? So in this video, I'm going to give you a peek into my master's program and what the most important courses and concepts were. And that will help you decide whether you want to go for a master's or learn everything yourself. I'm Sandeep and in this channel, I talk about data analytics, masters in US and job search. If you are someone interested in all these topics, please consider subscribing. So I'll walk you through eight different modules that was covered and what the most important concepts were and how I use that during my daily role as a data analyst. Our first course, database foundations. It's very important to have a very strong foundation and hence this is the most important course of all. All this covers is RDBMS systems, data warehousing concepts, data modeling, how to do a database design, how to build logical and physical data models, the most important SQL concepts. Since I had used SQL before coming for my masters, this course did not help me much. If you're completely new to this area, if there is one course that you had to take, that is this course. Because you will be asked all these concepts during your interviews and you'll be using most of these concepts during a daily job as a data analyst. Course number two, statistics. This is my most favorite course of all. Statistics is the way through which we understand the whole world and how it operates. Some of the concepts that you will see in statistics are already covered during a 10 set in mathematics. You would already be learning most of these concepts like mean, median, standard deviations, probability permutations and combinations. But the most important concepts for data analytics are outlier detection, A-B testing, statistical significance, confidence intervals. You would again be uh, using most of these concepts during a daily role as a data analyst. So having a strong statistical foundation is the key to being a great data analyst. Course number three, business analytics with R. So this course is basically on how to use the R programming language to do data analytics. Building models, equation analysis, and predictive modeling are all concepts that were covered during this program. According to this chart from Data Nerds, R is not that widely used across different companies. So I would say this course was important to learn the concepts, but as a programming language, I never used R during my last four years. You can easily achieve all the stuff that you can do in R using Python. But I took this course because I already knew Python and wanted to have a different programming language like R in my armory. Course number four, data warehousing. This course is closely related to the database foundations course that I use uh, because all the concepts that were covered here were kind of overlapping with the concepts that was covered there. But this is like a more in-depth course dedicated specifically to data warehousing, database design, dimensional modeling, where all concepts that were covered here. And in terms of uh, the role, data warehousing concepts were very important because if you want to communicate in the technical language with data engineers or data modelers or data architects, then we need to have a strong understanding of data warehousing. And almost all these concepts will be asked during the interviews itself. Course number five, marketing web analytics. This is a great course on how to actually do data analytics for any website. If any company has a website, they would certainly have either Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics embedded into the website itself. So analyzing website data like traffic, clicks, number of visitors visiting, conversion rates, dropout rates, how exactly the visitor goes through the funnel. You can clearly understand how to actually improve the customer engagement and reduce the dropout rates because that, that's eventually going to have a high impact on any company. Since I'm not a marketing analyst or a web analyst, I currently don't use any of these concepts right now but i'm sure that i'll be using all these concepts sometime in the future course number six machine learning this is by far the toughest course of all that i took during my entire masters so this is the hardcore and the real data science course it's a great course on machine learning concepts like supervised learning unsupervised learning regression clustering reinforcement learning this course is more about learning the theory behind it and how to actually build the algorithm from scratch rather than using ready-made libraries in python or r so if you're interested in data science or machine learning this is the most important course of all. But as data analysts, we don't need to learn all these concepts in depth. Just having an understanding of these concepts on a very high level is enough for data analytics. Course number seven, econometrics. So this is more of an advanced statistics course. It is actually a study of how to actually apply statistical methods to answer how to questions. How much will the college enrollment decrease by increasing the tuition fees by $500? How much will the usage of public transportation decrease if you increase the fare by $5 or $10? These are questions that actually answered by conducting experiments and using statistical methods to test all these hypotheses. I actually learned how to apply statistical methods to different types of data like cross-section data, time series data, panel data. But I would say this is more of economic scores and hence it's more applicable to someone who is interested in research or becoming a statistician more than a data analyst. This course is a bit too heavy for a data analyst. Course number eight, predictive analytics. So there are actually four types of data analytics like descriptive, diagnostic, predictive and prescriptive. So if you see this chart over here, predictive analytics is 
this kind of a more high value and high skill job. So predictive analytics is basically using past or historical data to make predictions about the future. A lot of these concepts were actually already covered during my statistics course, uh, business analytics course and machine learning course. So I actually did not get much value out of it. But the interesting thing was this course was dedicated to using SAS programming language to do predictive analytics. To add to SQL, Python and R, now I actually had SAS as the fourth programming language that I learned during my course. And I would certainly say that this course is more for data scientists rather than data analysts because as data analysts, we'd mostly be analyzing past and historical data and extracting insights from it. You would not be doing any predictive modeling. Predictive modeling is more of a data scientist role. If you are interested in data science, this is a must take course. I tried my best to give you a good gist of what the curriculum was during my master and I seriously hope that this video will give you a good idea if you want to really spend that much money on a master's or if you want to like self-learn everything and save that money. So if you like this video and if you're interested in data analytics, please check out this video which is like a Q&A regarding data analytics and let me know in the comments what you think about the video and if you have any questions, please hit a thumbs up and please do share and subscribe to the channel for more interesting content like this. See you again soon with another video. Bye.